going on, everybody? It's your boy, Rail, back with another review, man. Yo, this is BMF Season 2, Episode 4. Before we get into it, I'd like to address the Discord gang. Salute to y'all out there, in there, getting busy every day with good conversations, putting each other on. That's the whole reason we put it together. All right? So, we can discuss different films, television, and I got a live that I'm going to do today. I'm dropping it. I'm recording and dropping this today, and I'm gonna do a live today. So if you see this, be on the lookout for it. But I got some things I want to talk about. And so to those listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, gang them that don't need the visuals, they just need your boy Rail's voice. Salute to y'all, and of course you, the YouTube viewer who needs it all. You need everything. Now, I'd also like to dress this uh, nasty ass fake beard I got going on. I'm on a beard journey. Okay? All right? Some fellas will feel me. Some will laugh at me and say, oh, that piece of shit beard. I know some of you niggas out there got luxurious beards. Huh? Looking like a Santa. Maybe looking like an official biker with your joint, but not real. Okay? My bum ass father did not bless me with the genetics to come in with the full joint. Ladies, for some men, this is a sensitive... Topic, okay? Some of us want beards. So if your man is out here looking like me, it just won't come together, and you trying to clown him, you're hurting his feelings. Okay, cut that shit out. All right, and like I said, so y'all ain't gonna see your boy shaving down no more. I'm finna, I'm finna let this shit go. Just see what happens. I don't give a fuck what they think at work, okay? I don't care. I don't care how I'm gonna look on screen. I'm going through it, damn it, and y'all finna go on this journey with me. And if fellas, you want to get in the comments, huh? If y'all been looking like this, you want to help your boy rail out? If there's a product, all right, that'll get this thing flourishing some more. Like, I, am, I don't need no help with the goatee, but this, 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 I got, I need that. Okay, I'm getting old, so I need the full experience. I need that. Anyway, man, that's not why y'all here, but I'm glad that y'all was here to listen to me. All right? We a family, man. I could talk to y'all about this. Damn. You know, my, my people won't understand. But anyway, now, let's get into this motherfucking episode. Whoo, I have hope now. I have hope that they have let the most outrageous bullshit, I hope they got it out their system. All this unbelievability. I hope that this episode is the last of it, okay? We gotta go with Lamar Luther Myers, Okay, he's no longer just Lamar Myers. He's Lamar Luther Miles. Myers. First off, gotcha. what I tell you? What the fuck did I tell you? Okay, who was in the comments arguing with me about how they sing in every single fucking thing in the power verse, in the 50 verse? Every time they try to show motherfucking singing, they try to... Show off their talent. They like, oh, I'm finna get, I'm gonna sing. I'm on TV. I got, they all take their shot at singing. Now, I thought it might have been one of the ladies. And somebody was like, BMF ain't nobody sung yet. In your motherfucking face. That's because season two ain't come yet. Here go Lamar in there like a goddamn young Luther Vandross, like a goddamn Isley brother. When that nigga was locked up and getting questioned, first off, that was some bullshit. We're gonna get into that. That motherfucker had the voice of an angel. I said, how this serial killer ass nigga got that beautiful ass voice? I fucking knew it. I told y'all I was going to be some singing. If you give it long enough, they're going to do some singing. But yes, this, this episode is going to be heavily based on Lamar, which is why I'm going to save him for the end. Because I have so many complaints about every motherfucking episode he was in. I mean, scene. Every scene he was in. First and foremost, <sighs> So Meech is in the hospital, and T is in fear for his life, so he goes and grabs him. My man got a full-ass Uzi in the bed underneath the bed sheets. Like, what police let you get shot? What In what world does a police officer let you get shot, witness the shooting, okay? And they are not stationed there, or you're not handcuffed to the thing for questioning. It just is what it is. You would be arrested... While you're comatose, while you're knocked out after surgery, just to make sure your black ass don't go nowhere, because we got questions. So come on, that's bullshit. T could just come in fully hoodied up and come grab you. 
Right? I, I keep trying not to talk about Lamar. I'm trying to save him. But God damn it, I got it. Now here come Lamar. And I guess the way he travels now is like the fucking Undertaker. He travels by way of body bag. <laughs> like his man, his man Donnell, that's where he rests. That's where he gets transported in body bags. So you, this motherfucker is different. So he pops out and he's got them gators and he's got his doctor fake outfit on with the pistol ready to finish off what he started. But he got to him first. I'm like, this is, I'm like, here we go with the bullshit. Here goes some more bullshit. Right? Now, my man's fresh out the hospital. Now, both of them trying to get some... I guess I'm just talking about Lamar. I can't... He's in every fucking scene. I can't even bust down the scene without Lamar being part of it. This was a Lamar-ass episode, so it just is what it is. I'm just going to go ahead. (laughs) So, now, Meech comes out, and he's ready to go get some ass from baby mama number one. Which, the Meech, just the the regular toxic shit. I was like, God damn it. I forgot she even existed. I was like, who is this... Who does this motherfucker keep yelling at him? It's first baby mama. So now they try to make a plan. They had to get him out the hospital. He still ain't recovered. But this is an attempt to save his life. She bitching. And then ends up smashing him later. And he's selling her a bunch of shit. Just right after he left Cash Doll Crib. Baby mama number two. Okay, who's doing coke with both the kids around. I'm like... All right, talking about she need to take the edge off. And he apologizing. Oh, yeah, Lamar's alive. Lamar's alive. Now... Meech goes and gets some ass. Okay, he should... I don't know why he's... He should just stop the sex scenes. But, oh, girl? Hey. Hey, salute to you, Ma. I saw the moves. I saw the moves. All right? I can see how you... I can see how you was baby mama. That's all I got to say. Even with that weak-ass hairstyle you rocking, looking like Sideshow Bob. But it's okay. Because you're fine anyway. With that flat-ass... What was that? That was weak as hell. Anyway. Now, while he getting ass, Lamar trying to get some ass too. Lamar's down in the dumps, right? He had to have his man change his colops... Col- co- oh, fuck me, man. Colopscopy? Colosco- co- co- colosp- coloscopy? Coloscopy bag. Am I right? Man, his shit bag. All right, I, that's, that's where I'm at with it. I try for y'all. I try. But these words tangle and twist it. Watch how the ice twinkle and glisten. Anyway, so that was disgusting. I don't know what that shit was leading out his body, but yeah, so he's shitting out through his stomach into the bag, which happens most times, you know what I'm saying, when you get shot. I know a lot of the guys from the block, they didn't have to have them from time to time, which lets you know, hey, being shot isn't cool. Okay, it's not a good time. If you don't die, there's still repercussions. So he's got the shit bag, his man, hey, that, and I gotta say, Lamar's homie is a real one. He's risking his freedom, Already for this motherfucker, he risking his gators for a motherfucker he know is gonna fuck him up, and you know, he's transporting them places, and and now he's changing his shit bag. Get you a friend like him. Yeah, he's a weirdo. Yeah, he got some tig in him. He likes to fuck on dead bodies. I like you know how you just say that like that's just a if like a motherfucker just smoke squares or something like yeah he's got a bad smoking habit he's got a bad necrophilia habit it whatever whatever it's still a good friend but yes we seen lamar try to go get some ass now this nigga know damn well a shit bag on still ain't recovered just woke up out of coma he thought he was gonna wrestle with a fucking heavyweight in the bed nigga i was sitting there it made it was hard for me to breathe while i watched her climb on top of him I said, God damn. I, and then that is the same chick he was smashing in the bathroom. Lamar is a different type of monster. I look. And the fact that when that man thought he could go around with Shorty, I said, damn, and he going to let her get on top? I was like, come on, fam. You got to. I don't know. This look like to, Shorty looked like she put handed him right back to the hospital. I said, this man is crazy. Not for a night. Right there, I'm like, okay. And she had to, and she got upset. That's crazy. You let, she was very pissed. But anyway, so as he leaves there, he's sharing with his man, you know, talking about his dick ain't working. And, th- and his man's like, bro, you got three months to go. Like, what? You trying to rupture shit? So already, right, they set the stage for Lamar. He shouldn't be having sex 
because he can crush something up in here. And if you with somebody that's about, she was about 275 plus tax, then that's being nice. So if he thought he was going to do that, so we know like, okay, he can't have sex or he could get brutally injured. But his man also gave him a pep talk, calling him the beast. And what did the beast go do? He went and did some beastie shit. Now, he couldn't even have sex, but somehow Lamar can go out there Beat the shit out of Big Boy with a two by four, which I thought was funny because I saw like Lamar did them a favor because Big Boy and his homie quit on meeting them. He just ex- they they exited. They said fuck this, we ain't listen to your talking no more. We out of here. So he just lost that gang, and I just found it funny that the second that them niggas walk away from Meech, them is the people that Lamar kills, right? And look at how the serial killer kills and brutal. Mike Myers fashion. He was catching slasher bodies. Beat him with a two by four, nailed to the throat. I'd never seen something more disgusting in my life than when Lamar emptied that shit bag on Buddy. Now, now, I gotta say, for before he killed those two dudes, what did we see? Some more unbelievable shit. The cops bring in both Meech and Lamar to have a standoff and say, hey, whoever snitches first, okay, is free. Other nigga in jail, go. I said, well, this is an interesting tactic. We're not going to split them into different rooms. We're not going to try none of that. We're just going to bring them all in here and test their gangster. Now, both of them talking about fucking Batman versus the Joker, which is that what the writers were going for? Like Lamar's the Joker? Some psychopathic dude that can't be stopped and Batman is so honorable and noble that he and and so they having this comic book reference off like Lamar was like, yeah, you know, the Batman movies coming out. okay and I just find it funny that, you know, the Jokers, they sharpen each other's tools and do I'm like, oh, my God, really? This conversation is how we having it. And then Meech is a stand up dude. He's like, no, I'm not worried about this dusty motherfucker like. Just violating Lamar. And then they free Lamar. I thought he was a secret dead body that the the detective written him off as dead. So nobody in the department but him, a doctor, and now his new partner knows about. I'm like, there's no paperwork to bring him back from the dead? Nobody has questions? Like, there's no police chief saying... Yo, my man, I thought you said Buddy was dead. What is he doing handcuffed in the fucking interrogation room with Meech? What's happening? So I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. This is fucking ridiculous. They just, nobody gives a shit about continuity. It just, it, like the suspension of disbelief is like, I don't know. It's unfathomable. But they let them both go. Let them both go. I'm like, all right. So after having that standoff with Meech, I'm like, okay, they were looking to grab Lamar for sure. They really wanted Meech to say, yo, he shot me, send him back to jail, right? Which I know that's snitching, but that might not have been the worst thing. Like, get this motherfucker off the street. For real. Nobody's safe. So the fact that Lamar goes out there, bare knuckle, like, two by four this motherfucker to death, and then emptied his DNA on this man's face. There's DNA in that fucking shit bag. He dumped evidence all on the fat dead body. Are we going to examine this? We're going to get the CSI toolkit? Does that not exist? I think it's what, the 90s? I think science came up. I think you could discover who shit on the victim. Call me crazy. I think you could come up with it so but yeah that was the most disgusting thing i seen and then and lamar don't stop there so i was like okay this is bullshit what was bigger bullshit is that my man couldn't fuck big girl right he couldn't get down with her but he could have a full-on gladiator battle in a nigga's bad in the nigga's bathroom but he closed the mirror and lamar's back there no gun lamar said i'm just gonna go ahead and bare hand kill motherfuckers like a slasher would do Beat the shit out of him, kicked him all in the face, taking severe body shots, punched by a grown man. I thought he was supposed to, I thought he couldn't even have sex because if he did, he could rupture something. But he could get into a full-on fucking bare knuckle bang out in the bathroom, close quarters. Okay, cool. We'll roll with that. 
We ain't got no choice. We ain't got no choice. And then his finishing move is serial killer shit. I'm going to wrap your fucking curtain around you and smother you to death. So Lamar's just out here. I'm just like, this is what we're dealing with. Now, let's continue with the with the shit. Uh, T is stepping up to the plate. He wants to look out for his brother. So he goes against his brother's wishes and ends up asking the chick he's trying to smash to who knows that her man beat the shit out of him. And he was talking all that sucker shit. If I was your man, I could have... He just did that shit last episode. You deserve better, queen. Dirty macking at the full extent. Now, after all that dirty macking, kissing, doing that shit, he like, yo, um, I know your man just beat the shit out you and that makeup is still covering that black eye, but you think you could uh, hook me up, give me an invite so I could talk business with him? I was like, the ball's on tea. Some old wild shit. And I guess that's not unbelievable. Because, I mean, T is a fuckboy at this point. Like, I mean, your brother told you not to fuck with Boom. But he's like, yeah, I'm going to do this anyway. Okay? T went and made an executive decision. It worked out. He was able to talk his way into a few keys to keep them floating. Right? But then as soon as he do that, he go over to make sure he says, if I if you use my wife, I wouldn't uh, be sending you like a servant. I wouldn't have you did. Man, fuck out of here. I, if I was her, if I was Lala, I'm not trying to hear none of that shit you're talking about, homie. You was talking about how you was going to take care of Boom. Now you buying weight off of him. And now you telling me what you would do if you was my man. Come on, man. Come on. Now, T had such success working with that white woman before. He figured, he said, fuck it, I'll keep it going. So he makes the little fake compartment, have her move the keys. Because if anybody going to follow anybody, they're going to follow T. Now, T got the drop-off perfect at the old folks' home. Thought that was genius. But when the cops saw that a white woman was driving off, he was like, yeah, no. He trying to pull some shit. Let's go get her and see what's to it. Now she's locked up. Now all the shit start. Now, we do got to mention, while all is going on, the church has got some issues, right? Meech, Meech and the mom, when he was like, oh, let's have a prayer for Meech, motherfuckers on the congregation got up and left. I'm not going to lie to you. I was dying laughing. Motherfucker, I heard a motherfucking church say, oh, hell no. <laughs> and got up and exited. I said, that's some cold-blooded shit. That's cold blood. They was like, I'm not praying for this nigga. They, they didn't even have the, the courtesy of sitting there in their seat not praying for him. You could have been like, man, I ain't praying for this nigga. Like, but you don't want to end the service. They, they heard Meech name, and it was like the devil himself, and they just got up and walked. And as she sees this, she stepped up and started check A, start spilling the tea. Like, she poured tea, big-ass pot all over the place. You, with your drunk-ass daughter that's getting in car accident. Oh, and you, I pray for you and your bum-ass son who was blah, blah. She was going in, hey, telling the church's business. She was airing it the fuck out up in there. She let everybody know they kid ain't shit either. But I ain't wishing death on them. I said, damn. That would have been a church sermon that I would have been glad to sit in. I'd have been in the one in the back pew in fucking tears. I'd have been dying like I would. I almost want to go to a church and hope that some shit go down like that. When the congregation starts spilling tea on people. Oh, man. That had to be a sight. <laughs> it made Snoop in the lesson. And then we see Charles. Oh, Charles. Hey, Shorty is applying pressure to Charles. His wife's like, I got to go. Yeah, you got to go. The pastor ended the service. Fuck you talking about? So she leaving. And old girl spitting that good. Oh, hey, don't do that to your son. Because he talking mad shit about Meech. Look, look how you talking to Meech. Look how you talking about. I ain't blaming him. If, if, if Meech wasn't my son, I wouldn't be praying for his ass either. I said, God damn. God damn. Like, that's tough. That, that's almost saying, hey, I want my son to be dead. I said, well, okay. All right, Charles. And she's sitting there trying to protect Meech and talking all that good shit. And they're like, oh, you're good? Like, putting it on him. Like, this lady is not backing off Charles. She won't hurt some of Charles. All right. And I didn't, I think she gonna get it. I don't know if that's a hot take. Well, I don't think so. Hey, but when his wife pulled back up, like it's time to go. I said, "Ooh, Charles, you in trouble." We he see it, he see it. 
So yeah, that's finna get spicy. Cause old girl's not finna give up. He cl- she clearly knows he's married with several kids, and she just don't give a fuck. She's like, ah, this is gonna be my man. I said, ooh, what a man to do. How you gotta stay strong. You see, ladies, you see how hard it is. And look, 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 just how hard it is. This nigga Charles is broke. He broke and get no ass. His business that he bought, they get from his son. Is not the most successful. They ain't seeing shit. They wife working at Wendy's. A woman sees this, and you probably, if you and your man was in that same situation, you probably looking at your nigga like, yeah, well, he ain't shit. Ain't no woman gonna want him. Bullshit. Bullshit. Now, ladies, what that tell you about you? You a snatch a no nothing nigga from another woman. That she's a harlot. That's a Jezebel. Goddamn it. That's the that's the definition of a Jezebel. I was like, ooh, she ain't shit. Anybody that want Charles right now ain't shit. <laughs> Especially knowing I said, oh, okay. So it's just bullshit. But now, Darlene, I think that's her name. Darlene get locked up. We all know she telling, right? So <laughs> T comes and tells Meech what he did, and Meech like, what the fuck? You are the dumbest nigga I've ever met. And I, I gotta be honest, that was a span I didn't see coming. Because all these earlier episodes, the way Meech was moving, I just knew he was gonna be the one to fuck this up. Like, he was trusting Blue. We see, we see um, B. Mickey felt a way. Like, I was supposed to be your number two. And he couldn't, that, I wish they could just give that man a scene in which his thin ass don't have to put the sad face on. Like, can we see a, a happy B. Mickey? Let's see maybe what that looks like. He is too small. That man look like he ain't never eat no meals. Like, hey, 50, get your man right. And he's sitting there with a pouty face. She said, I thought that was supposed to be your number two. You said I, you said you was going to play with my frog. Like, get your dumb ass out of here, frog face ass. Like, oh, I can't stand B. Mickey's face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I, I can't wait to, does he get killed in real life? Who's B. Mickey supposed to be? I can't wait till this motherfucker gets shot so I ain't got to see him on my TV screen. God damn. He got the most irritating face. He got the face that makes you angry. Like, I just be like, ooh. But anyway, T's like, hey, we fucked up. And now Meech is like, okay. Old girl snitching. Our keys are gone. We got no money. Can't pay Boom. And Boom has already threatened, like, don't fuck with my money. And the first thing they do before they can sell anything is have his money fucked with. So I'm like, oh, shit has hit the fan. And Meech's first thing is, okay, fuck it, we're gone. And I said, smart. Just run away. I don't see any other play. These motherfuckers, we've seen them episode by episode run into controversy, somehow come up out of it, right? Somehow have a backup plan, somehow got lucky, shit worked out. Sometimes you just got a motherfucking run. You got to get out of town. And when Meech suggested going to Atlanta, I was like, oh, that's right. BMF was them dudes in Atlanta. And I was wondering how they got, how they was going to get there from Detroit. Now we know. They made Detroit too hot. They had a detective that's overly zealous on their ass. And now they heading to Atlanta, right? Meech's like, yeah, I know some guys down there. We could just run down there. They hopped in the whip. And uh, this is the part that that blew me. Where the fuck did Charles get that money? And why is Charles helping out kids who he just hemmed up to and just said, I wouldn't pray for me if he wasn't my son. Damn, they're wishing death on me. He's shitting on his kids. And then when they come in with no explanation, just we got to go. We fucking out of here. Charles all of a sudden got a fucking a gangster knot on him. He got a fucking fold on him. I said, where this nigga? How many selling fans this nigga been installing? Huh? He just lost the driver and the car. He lost two employees. He lost two employees in the car. Where the fuck that wad come from? I think it was that chick. And then, because he's so willing to just get all the money he ain't got, his wife just had to falsify documents and put credit under the daughter's name because she couldn't buy her no goddamn brawls. But an episode or two later, 
this nigga's guapped up and got it ready to go. He didn't even have to go to the secret stash. That shit was in Charles' right pocket. Well, and he's like, look, this is all I got. Here you go. Take your kids because, if you, you know, you got to do anything for your kids. Now, all of a sudden, he daddy of the year? I said, man, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out. I don't even know who Charles is no more. They've been spending him to be one way, and now his kid's gone, and he gave them a fucking fat knot with hundreds in that motherfucker. It was hundreds. They want some dollar bills. Look at that shit. I said, fuck out of here. They take that, and they dip into Atlanta. And out the blue, hick, where the fuck did Lamar Luther Myers come from? Where was that nigga sitting at? He came out of nowhere in that same ass Jeep on bullshit in a, a final car chase. Ran, he literally ran them niggas out of town. I was like, yo. So, I guess next episode, we're going to see Meech and them getting established in Atlanta. Which, I'm hoping, should bring back the reality now. Y'all done did y'all comical shit. Y'all done ran this Lamar shit. Lamar is not following them to Atlanta. He might have his own thing going on in Detroit. Maybe we could get back to some more realistic shit. Because it seems like this this writing team is good with the beginning. Right? See, in storytelling, anybody that written anything, if any of y'all written anything, y'all gonna know this. The beginning of anything you're writing is the easiest. Starting, easy. But the middle and the end, okay? The starting shit is is easy. The middle, though, these middle episodes, middle story, that's hard because you got to put work in. Now you start with the middle. Now you got to start working. This is the work. You got to start working to the ending. And the ending has to be phenomenal. But for them, the ending is already written. So all they got to do, they got the beginning. They got the end. The only thing the writers are making up is the middle. And this is where they're fucking up. But I'm hoping that now that there's a second beginning, because they got to start their Atlanta journey, it it should get better. Because I ain't going to lie. I was scared. These last two episodes, I'm like, okay, so we're living in fantasy land. We're just going to let anything happen. Fuck it. Anything goes. And I'm like, here goes some more power shit. Here goes some more power shit. But uh, that's what I'm hoping. So, hope y'all enjoyed this review. And with that, protect your health, yourself, your wealth, man. Your boy Rell is out of here. Peace. Yo, I know I don't need no introduction, but y'all know who it is, man. It's your boy, Hollywood Rail. And I appreciate you for sliding through and watching these videos. But you know what I need from you? All right, if you ain't already, I need you to like this and subscribe this, man. We at 1,000 trying to get to two, all right? Push it for your boy. Get them algorithms up. So when it comes to that subscribe button...